Governor Kevin Stitt has signed bills redistricting the Oklahoma legislature for the next 10 years. The revised districts equally divide the state's 3.9 million people into 101 House districts and 48 Senate constituencies, thus complying with the federal one person, one vote rule. COVID-19 issues delayed census figures needed to complete the redistricting, pushing lawmakers close to their legal deadline for finishing the process. With Republicans firmly in control of both chambers of the legislature and the governor's office, there was reason to suspect at the beginning of the process that it would be done secretively and in a partisan fashion. That's certainly been the pattern in the past, regardless of which party controlled the legislature. We were surprised and pleased then to see a relatively open process and an improved result. The House and Senate held 22 town hall meetings, 18 in person and, and four virtual, to get input from the public. Proposed redistricting maps and related materials were made available for online review. Republicans and Democrats were involved in the process, and the final map eliminates some of the most partisan oddities of the previous map, which somehow had three House districts represented by people living in Yukon and no one in the Senate from Tahlequah. The legislature will, will reconvene in special session this fall to redistrict the state's congressional districts. The redistricting process also continues all the way down to the city council district level. Allowing legislatures to draw the lines of their own districts inherently creates a conflict of interest, which sometimes leads to ugly partisan results. The fact that there were fewer extremes in that direction this time is a credit to the leadership of the House and Senate and the redistricting committee chairman. But the better solution is a nonpartisan, citizen led redistricting process that requires compact, geographically reasonable districts drawn with an eye towards which, drawn without an eye toward which party it favors. Other states have figured out how to do that, and Oklahoma should too. But until that happens, and for at least the next 10 years, Oklahoma has an improved legislative map that was put together in an open fashion and that better reflects the state's population.